What's up everybody? It's Professor Rako here. Uh, what we're going to do now is going to do one more video on uh, weighted average shares outstanding, which is our denominator of our earnings per share calculation. So remember, with basic earnings per share, you're asking yourself on the numerator, is there a preferred stock dividend? And if so, I'm sorry, is there a preferred stock? And if so, do I need to subtract that dividend? On the denominator, you're saying, are there actual stock transactions? If so, I need to calculate the weighted average shares outstanding. Now you'll find problems in your homework and you might even get this on a test if the, the questions focus more on the dilutive side of things, uh, where it will say shares outstanding during the year were a hundred thousand. Well, if that's what it says and there's no other transactions, then, you know, it's st the answer, your weighted denominator is just a hundred thousand. I mean, you could put it in the format of the table, but it'd just be a hundred thousand times 12 twelfths equals a hundred thousand. So, uh, you'll see that in your homework a lot, probably, and possibly even on the test. Uh, so if you see that, you know, you don't have to calculate the denominator it's given there for you. All right. So this example, we're adding one little thing here. Stock dividends or splits. OK, if those occur, reading up here, you must restate shares outstanding before the stock dividend or split. OK, so it says these do not change the shareholders total investment. They only increase the number of shares representing that investment. All right. And so the reason we restate is so we can compare earnings per share. All right. So if you think about your financial statements, when you have more than one year presented, what we do is we go back and restate everything as if the dividend or split had occurred at the beginning. And that way, the earnings per share number is comparable across periods. OK. Now, in the examples we're going to do here, it's just one year. So we're just going to restate back to the beginning of the year. Uh, but you'll see what you'll, you'll kind of get the point from that. All right. So we've got this. Uh, Going on here, we got a beginning balance of 75,000 shares. And notice here it says we issued uh, 75, uh, sorry, we issued 25,000 uh, shares for cash. All right, I think I just turned on the eraser mode. Yeah, hang on one second. There we go. All right, so that means we're going to add 25,000 shares. Okay, that's us issuing them. So remember, issued and outstanding both go up when we issue more shares. That brings our total up to 100,000 shares. All right. Now it says we have a 50% stock dividend. All right. So anytime you have a stock dividend, you might you take the shares outstanding, which is 100,000 at that point in time, multiply it times the dividend, which is 50%. So that's an additional 50,000 shares. So, you know, I obviously did not have to tell you that it was 50,000 additional shares. We did that in the equity chapter. So you should be able to uh, handle getting that number on your own. All right. So that brings our total up to 150. Or you could just skip that and multiply 100 times 1.5 to get up to 150. All right. So that's the other way to do it. And that's what we'll actually do when we get down to the table. All right. Then we issued a 40,000 more shares for cash. So that's another 40,000. And that brings our total up to 190. All right. So let's scroll down here and let's do our table. I'll try to keep it all in view here. So I'm going to do it just like we did on the previous video. All right. So we've got dates outstanding. I've got shares outstanding. I've got the uh, percent of the year or fraction of the year that they're outstanding. And now I'm just going to add a column here and I just call this restate. All right. And that brings me to weighted average shares. All right. So let's uh, go through here and uh, just fill in. Let's not worry about the restate column yet. All right. So our beginning bounce was 75 and we didn't do anything up until March. All right. So that is two twelfths of the year. And then we added uh, from three one to eight one. We had 100,000 shares outstanding, and that is fit five twelfths of the year. And then from 8 1 to 12 1, we had uh, 150,000 shares outstanding, and that's four twelfths of the year. And then from 12 1 to 12 31, we are up to 190,000 shares, and that's one twelfth. As always, just do a quick check right here and make sure you are accounting for 12 twelfths of the year. You don't want to make a simple mistake like that. All right. So this restate column is the new thing we've got in this problem. All right. So this number right here and this number right here both include the dividend. OK, these are after the dividend. So we're not going to restate those because remember, we want to restate everything prior to the dividend. OK, so we need to. So remember, to get to the 100 to 150, we basically multiply times 1.5. So that's all we do to these as well. That way it puts everything as if the uh, dividend had happened at the beginning of the period. So when you have a stock dividend, it's let's say it's a 30 percent dividend. This would be the restate column would be one point three. If it was a 70 percent, one point seven and so forth. OK, so you're just multiplying it times one plus the percent. 
Okay, so uh, basically 150% of the total is what 1.5 is. All right, now look, if you have a stock split, it's just the split factor that goes in there. So if you had like a four for one stock split, you would put four in the restate column. All right, so I'm not, I, I don't have that in this example, but if you have that, it's just whatever that factor is, you put that in. All right, so my weighted average shares, now I'm going to multiply across, but in these two columns, I'm going to include the 1.5 as I'm multiplying across. All right, so this gives me 18,750. This gives me 62,5 here. This gives me 50,000. And this gives me 15,833. All right, so my total is now 147,083. All right, so that would be the denominator that I use in my way in my uh, basic earnings per share calculation okay so once again if you have all these actual transactions you have to calculate your denominator and just a quick note here uh, if the stock dividend split occurs after the end of the year but before the issuance of the financial statements you would restate for the prior year meaning let's say this 50 percent dividend happened like you know january 10th all right that means all of these up here would have a 1.55 okay that's all that's saying so i don't know if you'll see that on a test or you know in your homework that much uh, if you do you're just going to restate for the whole year all right so that's just another example of weighted average shares so hopefully you've got a pretty good grasp on that uh, chances are you'll either have to calculate it in a problem on your test or in a multiple choice question so make sure you're able to handle that and once again if you're using the spicing book they do it a little bit differently uh, so you can do it their way or do it this way, but, you know, just pick the way the method that you're most comfortable with working through because uh, that will help you come test time. You know, I'm a big believer, be consistent uh, in the way you do these problems and it makes it easier to, you know, uh, put it back on paper come test time. All right. So that's weighted average share. So tune in next time as we continue on uh, with the rest of the earnings per share chapter. I'll see you then.